Are you interested in the Gaskire 70 or 80 millimeter refractor? In this video, we're going to take a quick look, do a short review, and figure out how to use this little guy. Stay tuned. This is the Gaskire 70 millimeter by 400 millimeter refractor telescope. It is one of the best sellers on Amazon right now for small, inexpensive telescopes. So let's look at a few things on it. Let's start by how you assemble it once you get the, the package. The basics of this are really simple. You mount it to the tripod just like you would a camera. And by that, I mean it's got a thread on the bottom that threads into the bottom of the telescope here. You will also notice that there's a slot below the screw hole. On the top of the telescope, there is a pin that goes into that slot that makes sure that you line this up correctly. Now, once you set this on top of the telescope, you spin the dial underneath it to tighten up telescope. You don't need to get it too tight. It holds pretty well. So one of the next things you'll find is trying to get this off the finder scope put together. Now my finder scope came already assembled one piece. Yours may not. If you loosen this up enough that will come out. So yours may have come in two pieces. You take this piece with the screws towards the back. It kind of leans backwards like this. So with that leaned backwards, you want to take the big black end of the finder scope, hold it and slide this in and about halfway should work just fine and snug these screws down. Now, one thing I want to point out on this telescope, the threaded screws or knobs that go into not only the finder scope, but that hold all of this stuff like the eyepiece in and hold the diagonal or the prism in. Those little metal screws are metal screws going into a fairly brittle, brittle plastic. So you never ever tighten them down. True here, it's true everywhere on the telescope. Do not tighten these guys down, okay? What you wanna do is you wanna just snug them, okay? You wanna put the telescope in enough and then just snug it down to where it doesn't move. Now we'll get to actually adjusting this later, but for right now, I'm just gonna put it right there so that it's easy for you to see white on both sides and all that good stuff, all right. So now you take this little guy, you put it on the two pins on the telescope, and there are two bolts, or excuse me, like nuts, that go on the top. They thread down, and this is a metal nut on a metal thread, so you're not worried about that, but you don't need to over tighten this either. You want it snug enough to where this entire assembly is not gonna move but you don't need to get stupid with it. Certainly don't get a pair of pliers hat. So you just want it snug to where that doesn't move. Okay, next thing is when you first get this, this will be way up in here. This and this will probably be separated. As a matter of fact, your eyepiece will probably be in a little case. You open the case, pull the eyepiece out. You may have two or three depending on which kit you get. Eyepiece drops in here. Make sure that you can see daylight through the eyepiece. There's no covers or anything in there. And you snug this down to where that just won't move. That's it. That, that You're not trying to kill it. You're not trying to tighten it. You just want it snug enough to where this doesn't fall out. Same thing here. Make sure there's nothing in there. There's no cap over it. There's no cap here. And you can always check this by looking through there, see if you can see daylight. Look through here and see if you can see daylight, obviously with the cap off. And then you just turn this screw until that just doesn't want to move and then that's it. See, my eyepiece is moving a little bit, so I give it like a sixteenth of a turn. 
until that just doesn't want to move anymore. There we go. That's it. Okay. So now that you've checked everything and you should be able to see light through here, the next thing is getting it uh, in focus. First thing, obviously check, make sure your caps. If in doubt and you can't see any light through here at all, take it back apart and make sure there's no caps or uh, bubble wrap or a piece of paper or anything you know, that's in the, in the path. Next thing is, you look through, all you see is fuzzy stuff. Well, you're going to need to crank this tube way out. See it coming, the silver part coming way out? And if you go all the way out until it stops and then come back in just a little bit, you, you ought to be close to most of the things that you're going to be looking at. So once you do that, then you can move it back and forth a little bit until you get in focus with whatever you're looking at. Now, the next thing is aligning the finder scope. And the way you align the finder scope is fairly straightforward. You want to look at something in outside in the daylight, something preferably far away. And you want to put in, if you've got multiple eyepieces, you want to put in your biggest eyepiece, which in most of these kits is a 25 millimeter. So you put your 25 millimeter in, you look at the top of a tree, top of a telephone pole that's a ways away, top of a water tower, something like that. And you get it pretty well centered in the eyepiece for this telescope. Once you do that, then you can center this. And the first thing you're going to need to do is look through it and make sure that you can focus on an object. Now, for me, the easiest way to do that is, once again, take this tube back out, hold it up, look through and you're going to want to hold your eye back just a little ways from it you know uh just just a tad and look through and you should be able to see light and the crosshairs although it's probably going to be out of focus if you look on the little end of this you'll see a, a little knob and you can twist and turn this to change the focus so look through it look at the object get it pretty well in focus Let me find something there we go get it pretty well in focus and then slide it back in here. And once again, tighten these down just until they stop. Don't, do not get over tight on this because you'll, you'll break it. Okay, so the idea behind lining this up is that the nose of the viewfinder and the tail can be at two different places. So basically you're going to make it do this. Okay. And the way you do that is you snug everything down. And when I say snug, I mean you, you very lightly turn it till it stops and quit. Then what you're going to do is you're going to, let's say I need to move it one direction. I can loosen the top one and tighten the two bottom ones. Once again, when I say tighten, you never tighten, you never torque on it. You just barely turn it until it's hits the, the tube and stops. If you need to go further, you loosen the top, you tighten the bottom two. And you can do that in any direction. By doing that and playing with it a little bit, you'll notice that the angle of the scope moves. Okay, And as it moves, it gets closer to or further away alignment with this. Although that's a long way of saying you you get this aligned first, then you move this to match that in the daylight. Now, once you've done that, at night, you can look through here at a star or whatever and uh, get it lined up, then look through here and get a closer view. So that's how you align the, the finder scope. So using the telescope, we've pretty well already covered all of that. It's very, very simple to use this thing. The Big knob underneath, of course, holds this to the tripod. You've got a little thumb screw or knob right, uh, right here, if you can see it. What that does is, tight, if you tighten it up real good, the telescope won't tend to go this way. Okay, And if you loosen it, it turns very easily. So then again, you tighten that down, and now it doesn't, or doesn't want to turn. Okay, so then you have this knob here. If you twist this knob counterclockwise, you will loosen it. 
and loosening that lets the telescope do this. Turning it clockwise tightens it. Again, you want to tighten it just enough to make it stop. And that's it. You're not trying to, you're not going to have to torque it down. You just want to turn it enough to make it stop. Okay. Uh, the tripod legs are obvious. You flip the lever, slide the, the leg to wherever you want it, flip the lever back, you're done. Now, once again, focus. You got to start way out here or everything's going to be blurry. With eyepieces, these telescopes come in different kits, and some kits will have multiple eyepieces. Some will have one, some will have two, some will have three. It'll come with different accessories depending on the kit you bought. The biggest one they usually come with is a 25, and almost all of them come with 25s. The next one down is a 10, and the next one down is usually a 5. That can vary from kit to kit, but that gives you an idea. Those numbers, the bigger the number, the less the magnification. So a 25 has less magnification than a 10, and a 10 has less magnification than a 5. So the smaller the number, the greater the magnification. Now, astronomers out there are going to fuss at me because technically it's field of view, not magnification, but for all intents and purposes, for the beginner, it's magnification. As you increase magnification, you decrease the sharpness of the object. You also decrease the brightness of the object. So a 25 millimeter will be sharper and brighter than a 10. A 10 millimeter will be sharper and brighter than a 5. So if you're looking at something and you put the 5 in there and everything's blurry and you can't get it in focus, step up to a 10 and that will fix that problem. So next thing we need to cover is one thing that catches some people off guard. When you look at objects in here, things are right side up and look correct. When you Look through here, things are upside down and don't look right. So the reason for that is this little piece here, this little guy, has a correct image or erecting image prism in it. And that flips the image around so that it looks correct. That can throw you a little off when you are trying to look at this and then look at this and look at this and look at this because things move differently in here as you move the telescope than they do in here. So you got to get a little used to that. So what all does this uh, telescope good for? Well, it's small and fairly inexpensive, but it's not that great for astronomy, really. It is good for the moon. Uh, it's, it's a nice little scope to check out the moon. You can, on a good night with the right eyepiece, you can see the rings of Saturn, but that's not saying a whole lot. Um, you're not going to see them really well, but you can see that they're there. You can see that Jupiter is a planet and not a star because it's a little bigger than any of the other stars around there, and it's clearly defined. So you can see that, but you're not going to see the big red spots. You're not going to see a whole lot of bands or any of that stuff. Mars is out of the question. The rest of the planets are out of the question. You can also see um, the Orion Nebula will look pretty decent in this. And you can see the uh, Andromeda Galaxy. Neither one of those are going to be spectacular, but you can see them. And that's about the end of what you're going to do at night with this. So you can see some clusters and, and um, some of the constellations and stuff look pretty but you're just not going to do a whole lot of, of deep space stuff. So the moon is the big one. Orion's kind of fun uh, and a few clusters. And, that, and that's really about it as far as astronomy is concerned. Regardless of, of what the logo looks like and regardless of what they tell you on the box or in the advertisements, this is just not really an astronomy telescope. Um, the good news is Looking at the moon and some of the stars and stuff is more than enough uh, for some kids. Uh, so young enough kids just getting into the hobby, this is an inexpensive way to get them into the hobby and a very easy way to get it set up and, and running for them. But you're not going to get a whole lot of really fancy stuff. The flip side of that is this is a really neat scope to use during the day. 
So if you take it to the beach and you look at the ships out on the horizon, that's cool. You want to look at some birds or animals. That's nice. It doesn't have so much magnification that uh, it's overwhelming to use, you know, out in the field for animals and stuff. It's light enough that you can throw it in the back of the car and, and carry it around. Heck, you can throw it on the back of a motorcycle because um, it comes in a little case, and, and we'll get to that here in a minute. So this is actually a really good option for something that you use at, during the day and at night, but it doesn't excel at either one of those. It's probably a better daytime scope than it is a nighttime scope. But it is what it is. Accessories. Now, I talked about every kit that this, you know, this comes in multiple kits and every kit can be a little different. All of the kits are going to come with some of the same stuff. And they're going to come with the tripod base, the, the telescope, the finder scope, the erect image uh, diagonal is what this is actually called, um, and one or more eyepieces. It's also going to come with an eyepiece tray. And what this is for is this goes down on the, the tripod in between the legs and you use it to hold your, your eyepieces while you're not using them, assuming you have multiple eyepieces. So most of the kits I saw also came with a case and the case is nothing special, but it's pretty nice. And everything fits in the case, so it's really easy to grab by the handles and off you go. I like that. It comes with a quick start guide, and don't be fooled, the quick start guide appears to be four pages, but it's not. Those two pages are the same as those two pages. So why they did that, I, I'm not even going to tell you, because it's the same language, it's the same pictures, it's... I got me. But anyway, um, it's not a bad little getting started guide, um, but it's nothing fancy either. Your eyepieces, as I showed, come in a little case. That's nice. Some of the other things that, uh, oh, well, okay, and you'll get a front cover. Front cover, you may notice, has a hole in it. The reason for that is that using the hole, putting the cover on there and using the hole instead of a fully open uh, aperture reduces the aperture, makes the image sharper and darker. That's helpful for the moon. And one of the reasons you may need to remember that is a lot of telescopes, you'll put a moon filter on the eyepiece. You can't do that on here. These are threaded, but I have yet to find a, a thread or a um, standard filter that will fit the threads. And that's true on every uh, Gaskier telescope I have played with. They're all threaded, but they thread to nothing. You also get a little phone mount, which is nifty in most kits, not all. Uh, you may get a Barlow lens, a 3X Barlow lens. I have found that this is pretty much junk. The idea behind this is it gives you three times more magnification. And the problem with that is this telescope just really can't handle that much magnification. You could, in theory, take your 25 millimeter. The way you use it is you put your eyepiece in there, tighten that down, and you put the Barlow in there, and you tighten that down, and now you've got three times the magnification. But this telescope and these eyepieces just really can't handle that. And even if they could, this Barlow is junk. So if you try and use the Barlow and you go, oh, the picture is horrible. What am I doing wrong? You're not doing anything wrong. Throw the Barlow away. Move on with life. Um, if you get the phone kit, you will also get a nifty little remote. This is cool. You pair your phone with this remote and then you mount your phone and everything on there. You open the camera app, and when you see something that you want to take a picture of, or when you get it in focus and everything going, you press this button, and it will uh, fire the shutter on your camera and take a picture of whatever the scope's looking at. So other than that, you're liable to get a lens cleaning cloth, and depending on which kit you got, you may have a couple more eyepieces or a couple fewer eyepieces. Now, the last thing I want to discuss is this is the 70 millimeter. And I think the part number for this is AZ7400. They make an 80 millimeter as well, AZ8400. The telescope is virtually identical. The difference is it's got a 10 millimeter bigger aperture, which collects a little more light, and that makes it a little better at nighttime viewing. Notice I'm saying a little. 
Uh, the 400 still gives you the same magnification. That one also has a little bit nicer mount. So if you are happy with a telescope that is not that great at night and um, an okay fun scope during the day, if that's good with you, then the 80 millimeter might make that a little nicer because you will get a little bit better views of stuff like the Orion Nebula and the, and the Andromeda Galaxy. Not tremendously better, but a little bit. And the mount is much better. So that's kind of cool. The mount is probably the biggest selling point for me. It's, it's much nicer. But anyway, that is basically everything there is to know about the 70 and 80 millimeter telescopes from Gaskier. If you have any questions or comments or anything, Leave them down below. Also, you can subscribe to the channel for more information. And hope that helps you. Clear skies.